So our second day of our lesson for 1.5, we're going to discuss some more piecewise functions, and then we're also going to take already graphed functions, and then we're going to create the um, equations that match those functions. So I don't know how much of this was assigned as homework. Hopefully, I don't overdo it here on the on the YouTube lesson. But let's review how we graph a piecewise function. Now, every teacher kind of does this differently, but what most of us have in common is we like to mark what are um, the boundary lines of the domain for the piecewise function, so where the function changes essentially. So if I notice my restrictions, let me get my stuff going here. My restrictions are over here, you know, on the right hand side, and I notice a few boundary lines. I notice there's one at negative one. So normally I'd take a highlighter and I'd kind of mark off x equals negative one. That just kind of helped me with, you know, visual boundaries. I, I need them. And then negative one's already marked, but four is another boundary. And we've taken this coordinate plane and we've subdivided it into um, three smaller planes. So sometimes the planes don't meet up, and we'll see that in a future case of some problems directly in your textbook. So don't panic. All right, so the first function is a parabola, which happens to be stretched by a factor of three, but it only exists for axes that are less than negative one. So what I always do is I figure out the ordered pair on the actual boundary line, even if it doesn't exist. So in this case, I'm going to have to graph an open circle because it doesn't exist on the boundary line. But when x is negative 1, if I were to throw that into this function, negative 1 squared is 1 times 3 is 3. So I'm going to be graphing an open circle at negative 1, 3. Now, in Algebra 2, when you did these, they were they were normally linear. Oh, nice job. My baby's doing a puzzle. I um, In Algebra 2, they were linear. These are not linear often. So especially not all the pieces, so we can't just like play connect the dots like we used to in Algebra 2. We have to think about what this function looks like in its entirety. So 3x squared is a parabola which is centered at the origin normally, and then it has a vertical stretch of 3. So it would have gone up like this. Now ideally I would come up with another ordered pair. So like for instance, if I throw a 2 into this function, 3 squared, 4 times 3 is 12. So, <laughs> bummer. Um, oh, negative 2 is what I meant. Negative 2 squared, so it's way up here at like 12. Uh, problem is, I'm not really great at graphing, so that was not a good job. Uh, you're going to do a way better job than I just did. I can't draw an arrow. Man, I'm doing rough here. But you're going to notice it's part of that quadratic. Um, nice. Challenges of every level. My little baby's doing a puzzle next to me. It's, he's doing a good job. All right, the next function. This is, should be, in theory, much easier to graph. It is a constant function of negative 1 between negative x equals negative 1 and 4. So between these two boundary lines, I have a constant of negative 1, which is just a horizontal line. But we got to watch the endpoint. So notice on negative 1, it's got the equal to bar, so filled in circle. And then on 4, it does not, so open circle right there. And then my last function, this guy here, is a cubic function who's been shifted right five and up to we'll talk about that in a second but on the boundary line itself we're going to have a good old-fashioned ordered pair plotted and then when x equals four if i throw that in right there four minus five is negative one to the third power is still negative one negative one plus two is one so this is not going to be good enough however so at four one that's some part of my uh, cubic function so let's talk about where the central point of that cubic function is. It should have been at 5, 2. So at 5, 2, that's like the center wiggle point. If you think about the shape of a cubic function, you know, it kind of wiggles through there. So if it makes you happy, we already have the point 5, 2, but let's come up with another point. How about what if x equals 6? So throwing a 6 in, uh, 1 to the third power plus 2 is 3. So this gives you a little better idea. I mean, so like an Algebra 2 student, they would just pretend like it's a line, but we know better. This is a cubic function, so it looks something like this. This tail end part of it got cut off because of the boundary um, of the boundary line. So, you know I don't graph well, guys. This is, this is no secret. <laughs> Alright, let's do a few more of these together. Um, let's say, let's do this one together. It's a good one. Alright, so I have two boundary lines to mark up here. I'm going to do them in red this time. Zero. Man, a bad day when you can't even mark the boundary lines. I would suggest you guys get a highlighter or like a Crayola marker in a lighter color to mark up these boundary lines. I think that helps. And then um, x equals 2 is my other boundary line. Get out of there, please. 
feel the same way, Logan. All right, X equal two. There's my okay. Unfortunately, boundaries are pretty close together. Um, doesn't really make a huge difference. It's just difficult for someone who struggles at graphing to graph something so narrow. All right, so my first function is only when x's are less than or equal to zero. So when I come up with that first boundary line point, it's going to be an actual point. So ordered pair filled in. When x equals zero, I get negative five. So zero, negative five right here. And then this is just a line. So you could do a few different things. You can do something less than zero. You can just continue on with slope. It does have a slope of positive one, but instead of going up and right, you would have to go down and left due to the restriction. Can't even draw a line today. All right. All right. So the middle function, in theory, should be the easiest one, but hmm. all right. So it's a cubic function between zero and two. At zero, I'm going to have to fill in, uh, not fill in the ordered pair because it does not exist, but zero to the third power is zero. So open circle at zero, zero. And then at two, which this does equal, so filled in point, two to the third power is eight. So I think about what this entire function would look like um, at 2, 8. This would be the like right arm of the cubic function, so like, like this, right? Oh, gosh. Having <laughs> a lot of trouble graphing this. Oh, man. And my four-year-old graph might be doing better than me. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> the moral of this story is, do the best job you can. You know what? Let me go back a problem. I feel like I graphed something wrong here. Yeah, I did. That was an awful job. Oh my gosh. You know what I was graphing? I was graphing a cube root function. Forget that. All right. <laughs> oh, six, three. Uh, it was supposed to be graphing like this. I super apologize. All right. Um... But that's not even right. Ugh. You know what I just realized? I think it's graph already on your note. Oh my gosh. There we go. Hey, bub. Do I think that puzzle piece goes there? I don't know. I can't even graph today, Logan. What are you, what are you doing? Nice job. I'm telling you. Oh gosh. Can't use the right color. <sighs> okay. I feel super bad about that mess up. So let's go ahead and do one more with at least part of the problem. Uh, my boundary lines here are... Actually, you know what? Let's skip ahead. Let's do this one simply because this is an obscure case where the boundary lines aren't like buddied up next to each other. So the first boundary line is at negative five, so right here. Whew. And then there's another one, the next function piece is between negative two and two. So there's going to be some dead space on this coordinate plane. So negative two and two, the next boundary. And then the third, again, we're going to have some dead space. The third one is here at three. Boy. You know, some days. All right, so my first function, thank goodness, is constant. Um, it's constant from uh, everything smaller than negative five. So at negative five, it doesn't actually have a point. So it's open circle. Nice. And then less than, going this way. Nailed it. Good job, Abruzzo. And then here, let's see if I can get this one right. Cubic function. Think about what a cubic looks like. It's supposed to look like this, right? So between negative 2 and 2, I'm going to have to come up with some ordered pairs, particularly on the boundary line, but probably something in between two. This has not been shifted at all, so it's going to go through the origin. Um, negative 2 plugged in gives me negative 8. So negative 2, negative 8 with a filled-in circle. And then 2, 8 also with a filled-in circle. Yeah, bud. What's up? Oh, I'm on a roll. Oh, I jinxed myself. Okay. Oh, I got on the goose. Good job. All right. So notice the dead space. That's okay. It happened. And then our third function here is the uh, sorry square root of x plus 3, which is a square root graph, which looks like this. But this one shifted left 3. So keep that in mind when we graph it. At the ordered pair, 3 comma, let's see, 3 plus 3 is 6. And then whatever the square root of 6 is. Uh -oh. let's see, I think I wrote that down somewhere. Maybe not. I don't know. You know what? I probably didn't because I probably didn't graph very well. 
So it's between two, two and three. So it's two point something. <laughs> um, so C, I already knew this would have been shifted left three. All right, so da, 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 da. where are we at? Three, two point something, <laughs> open circle. So I'll go like this. And then think about what this started. This origin point or origination point would have started right here and would have arced like this. So we just kind of have to keep on going with the arc. You know what? I'm going to call that like a super solid win for a Bruzo because that was, that was a really good job by me. <laughs> it was usually good. All right, now for the real fun. But on the back of that worksheet, I think it's titled 8B. Come here, pack it if you're following along from class. This is kind of a synthesis of a previous lesson. So it's great that you know how to graph, especially, you know, having a graphing utility. You can always confirm, and that's nice. But what if I give you the graph and you have to come up with a function? So this is going to be fun. I'm going to do, like... I think one of these with you is super good practice. So let's do, well, let's do a mishmash. So what you have to determine is, first of all, which function you're looking at first. So here we have function number one, which is a, a parabola. So for function number one, we're looking at the general form of this. And the easiest way to come up with the formula or the equation that matches that graph is to figure out who the vertex is, because if you know the vertex, then you know h and k, and then you just pull any ordered pair off of it somewhere. And you can, the whole point of us doing that last step is to figure out the a value. I can tell the a is going to be positive from the way the graph looks. I might be able to guess that the a is going to be something less than one, because maybe it made it like um, a little uh, vertically, vertically compressed it or horizontally stretched it. Um, but you won't know for certain until you do the algebra. So don't jump the gun and be like, it's totally going to be one half. Uh, it's not one half, by the way. That's just FYI. So once we figure out another ordered pair, which won't be that difficult, we're going to plug that in for H and K. Nope, X and Y. And then we're going to be able to do some math, solve for A, and then go back, put it all back together again. So the only thing that stays in the formula once we figure out who A is, is we're going to keep this vertex exactly where it is. Now notice this ordered pair was kind of labeled for you um, by a previous teacher. Thank you, teacher. I probably would have just gone with another ordered pair that was like really easy to find. Like this guy right here is clearly the ordered pair zero two. I don't like where I go with fractions. I'm gonna avoid that. But I can tell that this vertex is at one, two, three, right? Negative three, zero. So that's my H and that's my K. This is going to be my X and this is going to be my Y. So plug in carefully, y equals, I don't know, a, um, and then x was 0 minus h, which was careful, negative 3, it's going to turn to a plus 3, and then k was 0. So a little bit of math here, we can handle it. I'll just leave a in front like this if you don't mind. Um, normally I'd write off this plus k, I, I just leave it, but it's zero, so I'm not going to bother. And I'm not going to put a squared here, because I'm going to go ahead and square this. Three squared is nine. So I feel like I just did something wrong. Two x a squared nine. I don't know. Yeah, apologies if I just messed that up. This is not my day. All right, so the a value I'm getting here is two nine. When originally I did this, I got an A value of one fifth. I don't know how. <laughs> one of life's mysteries. You know what? I just I don't know. Sure. All right, maybe I did the math with negative two. I, I have no idea what I did, guys. I apologize. All right, so if A is not two ninths, I apologize. If it's secretly one fifth, then make sure you place it in the formula properly. But up here for equation one, you're going to leave Y and X as variables, and then you're going to fill in whatever this A value is, which again, might be wrong. Not bad. X is still this. The H is negative three. So X minus negative three is X plus three squared. And then you can say plus zero if you want, or you can just leave it off like that. Again, a little bit of a question mark on that one. I don't know if I screwed up or not. My bad. 
So same picture, I just gave myself some more space here, but yeah, sure. Keep it quiet. So if we will go for equation two, which is the line here. So the line, right? It should be nice and easy. Y equals mx plus b. There's no like center point in a line. What you need to figure out is the y intercept and the slope. And then once you have that, you should be good. So I'm not gonna do that one with you. I think you can handle it. Apparently I need bifocals though, so it might be. Alright, moving on to equation three. So that's this um, absolute value graph, which is general form. Looks a lot like the quadratic, except we have absolute value of x minus h plus k. So you have to use the vertex, which is at 5, 1, 2, 3, 4. So 5, 4 is the vertex. And then you need to use one of the ordered pairs that is clearly indicated. If it's labeled, super awesome. On a, on a, I think on a test or some of I'm going to label them for you because it's a pain in the tushy to grade if I don't label them. All right, so that's 6, 1. I'm going to use that one. So going to my formula, um, the y is 1 equals, don't know a, uh, x is 6 minus h is 5, and then k is 4. So a little bit of math, we got it. I say that we got it, and then I mess up, right? So absolute value of 1 is still going to be a 1, so if you want to put that, you can. Um, I'm going to subtract the 4 over, get negative 3 equals a, and that makes a lot of sense for this picture because I do notice it's uh, reflected over the x-axis absolute value graph. So negative 3 indicating it's much narrower than normal. Makes sense. All right, x minus h. So x minus 5 plus k plus 4. There you go. If I had the energy to rewrite this worksheet somehow, which I don't, I'd give you a lot more space. So I think we learned how life is easy. That maybe we want to do this like on another sheet of paper, huh? Um, for number, I'll give you a little heads up. I'm not going to do four, five, and six with you, but for equation four is the general form of a cube. Excuse me, I'm going to sneeze again. Ooh. All right, <laughs> cubic graph. So a and then x minus h to the third power. Be careful about that, and then plus k. That's the general form you're going to use for number four. Um, number five is a square root graph, so careful with the square root. The h and k keep coming up. And then for number six, um, that's fun. <laughs> that is a, um, it's a cubic graph. We're going to find out that it's been reflected kind of weird. And the good news is you don't have to know that ahead of time, but it's nice to kind of confirm your suspicions at the end of your algebra. So it's going to be a cube root graph, which is cube root of x minus h plus k. Please watch out the square root versus the cube root when you do your simplification for a. Um, I will tell you that on this last one here, that, like no surprise I messed up, but when I was making the key, I think I messed it up for like five minutes. Like I could not figure out what I was doing and it all was because I I can't count. So please be very, very careful that um, you're using appropriate points that are actually on the graph and not, you know, the totally wrong point, like I do all the time. Good luck. This worksheet is it's really great, but man, it's a good time. Good luck. 